Humans have been curious about the existence of life beyond Earth. Today, with our concern about the environment and our planet's livability increasing rapidly, even billionaires like Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos want to learn more about life in space. This curiosity led NASA, the European Space Agency, and the Italian Space Agency to join together to launch the Cassini space probe in the late 90s. The probe was designed to investigate the entire Saturn system, including including its rings and satellites. But what were scientists looking for exactly? And what does it have to do with NASA's upcoming Dragonfly mission? That's what we're going to take a look at today. Target Titan Titan, the largest moon of Saturn, was the main focus of scientists' attention on the Cassini mission. They're particularly interested in this satellite moon because Titan's atmosphere is similar to what the Earth's atmosphere was like before life appeared. It's also the only moon with a substantial atmosphere and liquid on the surface. It even has a weather system like Earth's, although it rains methane instead of water. The atmosphere of Titan is very different from Earth's current one, though, making it challenging to reach. Not only does it rain methane like we mentioned, but other organic materials form in the atmosphere and fall like light snow. This moon of Saturn has weather and surface processes that have combined complex organics, energy, and water in a way that is similar to those that may have sparked life on our planet. This makes it extremely interesting for scientists who are interested in the origins of life on our blue planet. Titan is larger than the planet Mercury and is the second largest moon in our solar system. It's about 886 million miles away from the Sun, or about 10 times farther away from the Sun than the Earth. Because it's so far from the Sun, its surface temperature is around minus 179 degrees Celsius. It's surface pressure is also 50% higher than Earth's getting there. While the shortest distance between two points is generally a straight line, Cassini didn't head straight to Saturn. Rather, its mission involved complicated orbital mechanics. It traveled past several planets, including Venus, Earth, and Jupiter, to get a speed boost by taking advantage of each planet's gravitational force. The nearly 5,700 kilogram spacecraft departed Earth on October 15th, 1997. It passed by Venus the first time in April of 1998, and then again in June of 1999 on its way back. After that, it came close to Earth in August of 1999 before reaching Jupiter in December of 2000. Other goals. While the main target of this mission was reaching Titan, it would be a waste for scientists not to study other things while the probe is out in space. Among Cassini's primary goals were searching for new moons, determining what produced Saturn's rings and their hues, and learning more about the planet's moons. It may have taken Cassini over seven years to get there, but it did not do so alone. Huygens, a tiny lander, was attached to it. Cassini entered Saturn's orbit in 2004 and spent 13 years studying the ringed planet and its moons. On Christmas Day 2004, Cassini launched Huygens, the first human-made probe to land on the surface of a planet in the outer part of our solar system. Because it was unknown whether Huygens would find anything solid on the surface, it was constructed to land on solid ground as well as float. The probe landed on a soft, wet, sand-like surface populated by frozen water stones after a two-and-a-half-hour descent through the stratosphere, which was achieved with the help of three different parachutes. That's where it was discovered that Titan's surface was a chilly minus 170 degrees Celsius. It also learned that the atmospheric pressure was somewhat higher than that of Earth. There were light winds, and carbon dioxide and other organic molecules were also present. The mission was a resounding success, despite the fact that about half of the probe's photos were lost due to a communication system failure within Cassini. Despite this fault, the 350 photographs that were recovered were a goldmine for scientists and researchers, depicting an orange planet enveloped in a thick fog with unmistakable indicators of liquid erosion. Dragonfly Mission As scientists continue their search for answers regarding the origins of life here on Earth, NASA's planned Dragonfly Mission, which will launch in 2026, will rely heavily on the work of the Cassini and Huygen probes. Dragonfly will allow us to examine possibilities for life in an atmosphere that is definitely unearth-like, as well as offering new hints about the formula for 
life on Earth. Titan has mountains, rocks, dunes, rivers, lakes, and oceans, just like Earth does. It also has a vast supply of organic molecules. Titan's mountains, rocks, and sand are largely composed of water ice, but instead of water, its rivers, lakes, and seas are filled with liquid methane and ethane. The Dragonfly mission will investigate the chemical processes that are taking place in this alternative Earth. To understand both how they link to our current lifestyles and how it affects the potential for life to develop. The data from Cassini and Huygens has supplied important hints for the design of this Titan return mission, as well as assisting scientists in better understanding what the new Dragonfly Project's team considers to be the most Earth-like body in our solar system. The Huygens data gave information about Titan's atmospheric characteristics, particularly its winds, according to Dr. Ralph Lorenz, who was a member of the Huygens science team and will now lead the Dragonfly mission team. The spaceship for the Dragonfly mission has four arms, each of which houses two stacked helicopter rotors. It'll be able to perform short flights near the surface with this design. Because the one-way light travel duration to Titan is more than an hour, each flight will be precisely planned but must occur autonomously. What Dragonfly can expect on Titan? Titan's gravity is about one-seventh that of Earth's, which is a little weaker than our Moon's gravitational pull. Its atmosphere is four times denser than Earth's, though, which is comparable to the pressure you would feel about a meter underwater. Imagine trying to fly with all that pressure weighing down on you. That's something important Dragonfly will have to contend with. What's the travel itinerary? Everywhere it goes, Dragonfly will study Titan's surface, which should have collected organic chemicals raining out of the atmosphere over time. Mounted to each of the probe's two sled-like rails is a drill that will grind up materials so they can be sucked into an instrument called a mass spectrometer. The mass spectrometer will be able to measure the masses of molecules in each sample, including heavier organic compounds that are the building blocks of life as we know it. Dragonfly also carries a suite of instruments that will directly analyze Titan's atmosphere, allowing scientists to see how it changes with the days and seasons. This could help us understand how Earth's atmosphere formed. The spacecraft will also measure any Titan quakes with a seismometer. And, of course, Dragonfly has cameras to take aerial images as it soars through Titan's skies. These photos will help the mission team scour for Dragonfly's next destinations and will also give the public awe-inspiring panoramic views of this mysterious moon. But how will it have the energy to carry out all these tasks? The sunlight that far out in space is only 1% as powerful as it is on Earth due to Saturn's distance from the Sun. Furthermore, much of what little light there is is blocked by Saturn's haze. Thus, Dragonfly will not rely on solar power. It will instead run on batteries during the day and recharge at night using a nuclear power source like NASA's Curiosity and Perseverance rovers. Titan's days and nights last about eight Earth days, so Dragonfly will be able to fly about once per Titan day. Conclusion Understanding Titan may help us uncover secrets about the origins of our own planet. What might be revealed? We'll find out when Dragonfly completes its mission. Until then, what do you think is the most exciting aspect of this mission? Let us know in the comments below and don't don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell for more interesting videos about space and the universe.